Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Vinay. I'm the DEO of Business Tabloid. We're here covering the MENA EV show. I'm here with uh, two gentlemen from the Ward Wizard Company, and they represent Joy EV Bikes out here. So, uh, gentlemen, you have the floor. Yeah. Hey, hi, Vinay. How are you? Good, good, good. to How see you on the MENA EV show. Same here. I am Ravindran Nambiar and part of the uh, Ward Wizard Innovations and Mobility Limited and I have had the international business so I like to talk about the international footprint of my company okay. and hence I am here to evaluate the opportunities. Hi, uh, this is Tarun. I head the marketing for uh, Ward Wizard group of companies. I think this is a brilliant occasion to be here uh, representing our brand in the MENA EV show. Right. I think in terms of the products, in terms of the legacy that we have, what we have done in India, we just now to replicate in other parts of the uh, globe and that's what we are here to explore the synergies between the EV ecosystems that exist. Right, right. So what was it as a company? So this is the parent company, right? So I want to understand what what Wizard does for the future of mobility, if you could just elaborate. I think what Wizard group of companies, in fact, I covered in my keynote as well. We have a business interest ranging from creating sustainable mobility. We are also foraying into food, the healthcare part of it in India. But if you talk about specifically on the EV side of it, which uh, we are creating uh, you know, sustainable mobility, clean mobility, we are a part of that revolution which is happening and everybody is witnessing. We started creating electric cycles initially, then we forayed into two-wheelers, we forayed into three-wheelers. We have a vision which we want to get into the four-wheelers as well when you talk about EV. So we want to create a value chain in which we are able to contribute in every part of EV revolution. And that's how we are creating waves and uh, we want to ensure that uh, we do not want to limit ourselves only to India. Right. We definitely want to become a global uh, brand and have a glo global imprint. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, adding, adding to the uh, what my partner has said to be on this, what was our innovations in Mobility Limited with this product offering Joy e-bike as a two-wheeler electric vehicle and the Joy e rig the three-wheeler. Uh, we are looking forward to creating an uh, impact in the sustainability domain wherein our vehicles are deployed in the various categories of uh, utility, mass rapid transport systems, be it a B2B case where the vehicles are being utilized for uh, doing their end mile connectivity right. or whatever the purpose may be. So we are trying to get into that space and as he rightly pointed out, Yes, we have our aspirations globally. So as he rightly said, we've started with two-wheeler and now three-wheeler and also looking forward to four-wheeler category vehicles, which we could think of. And our three-wheeler is already there in the markets. So if you could see our three-wheeler, India is a very big market of three-wheeler, yes. the auto rickshaws. Okay. So we also have L5 category uh, passenger vehicle, electric three-wheeler as named as Joy e Rack, which is also uh, coming out there. We also have got into the utility segment of the three-wheeler, right. wherein loaders for the segment of B2B logistics mm. and also for the garbage disposable for the mm. various government initiatives where uh, garbage disposal. So all that category of vehicles where uh, uh, there's a huge utilization happening, where there is a huge story on the sustainability impact is also considered. So yeah. likewise, what was our innovations in Mobility Limited? look forward to be a global a player in that domain that's that's what I look at brilliant brilliant so what are the unique features and benefits for joy e-bikes unique features and benefits of joy e bike yes i would categorically highlight one of the uh, pr product that we have recently launched in the uh, delhi auto expo and now it's out in the market that product is called mihos so if you talk about uh, the two-wheeler joy joy bike two-wheeler me horse as a category we have come up with a, a product which is uh, very high impact resistant okay now uh, if you look at the uh, various offerings in the market and vis-a-vis -vis compare with, with our product we have come, uh, come up with a product which has poly as the material which is being utilized to make the body of the vehicle, okay. which is high impact resistance. Right. So uh, one unique feature we could say 
it it has a high impact resistance so all accidents and all uh, wear and tear of the uh, category that category of two wheeler is uh, less in our vehicle okay so that's one uh, unique proposition that i would like to say apart from that uh, we have variants of various color in that and the telematics that is being utilized on the vehicle mm. gives a lot of information to the user or the rider who mm. actually rides the vehicle yeah. and uh, yes we have a nice range that it is ve this vehicle is giving roughly around 90 to 110 kilometers on a single charge okay, okay. and it is a lithium ion battery uh, vehicle so right. and 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 we are also working on various smartest solutions that can be offered on the vehicle so that's okay. that's that's our product we could say joy bikes latest offering mihos and that's going to be a unique differentiator for the category forward i would like to add a couple of more things as well you know while he had spoken about the product per se mm. uh, but there is something as a as a company uh, you know when you talk about it in the holistic way so one we say is uh, you know we are very close to customer we understand customer pulse and that is the reason why I say that we had made this product to be a durable product because a customer or the consumer of uh, EV had a somewhere an anxiety that this product, what they are using as an EV vehicle or a two wheeler will not last long. Right? Right. So we have tried to address that and we have tried to ensure that those anxieties in the customers in terms of uh, you know the, when there is a question on the adoption of uh, ev we are able to address that okay. uh, completely whether it is about battery that you talk about battery range anxieties and all we have ensured that those those are also addressed okay. and all of this we could do is because as i mentioned you know there is a reason why we were making the cycles first and then two wheelers and the three wheelers. There is a progressive steps that we are taking Correct. organically that we are taking only because we are very close to the market. We are very close to the consumers. Hmm. Basis that only we have ensured that this product Mihos is available at more than 750 locations across India. Right? Wow. Okay. And to a certain extent, we are also able to address that point of a consumer where he want that you know, when he wants to go for a product or whether he wants to go for a brand awareness, he can go into those outlets, he can go into those customer experience showrooms, touch it, feel it, take a test drive and then make a decision for buying. Okay, all right. That's quite insightful. With the coming changes, obviously India has also set a target for having an EV future, right? I think 2030, 2040 uh, is the desired date that the ministry himself has put. So what are the biggest challenges facing the electric vehicles? Obviously, charging range anxiety, like you said, is one part of it. But apart from that, what do you think are the additional challenges uh, that the EV industry faces? Um, when, I, when we talk about challenges, yes, uh, the industry is evolving from its initial nascent teething problem issues Okay. of market awareness, mm. range anxiety, as you rightly pointed yes. out, the supply chain management constraints, there are certain constraints, mm. and a lot of uh, concerns related to safety of the vehicle. Mm. So if you take challenges out, have to be out to be there, but yes, the awareness aspect of electric vehicle mm. and its sustainable impact on the, uh, in the, on the environment, mm. and yeah. hence the cost of the vehicle, be it on the higher side. So, all these are challenges, but more to do with the challenges. They are challenges are to be there. We can deal with the challenges. Mm. There is an enabling ecosystem by the government to handle these challenges. Right. So the entire world or the government of India and for that matter, the out of India as well. There's a lot of focus on uh, mm. having a sustainable uh, development considering the environmental mm. concern. Mm. Hence, those challenges are being tackled with the right kind of intervention of innovation of technology. Right. Like if you talk about only range anxiety. Mm -hmm. So people are anxious about whether driving an electric vehicle, if they run out of a battery, mm -hmm. will there be a charging available? So yes, mm -hmm. there are technologies which are coming wherein swapping yes. the battery is addressing one of the, cha one of the challenge right. where you could swap the battery. There are availability of the charging network mm -hmm. on the drive on on the go is available there are technology which points out there are apps there are systems yes. there are connected apps which tells you okay, where the next char available charging is available then yeah. there are new chemistries of cell advanced cell chemistries mm. are coming wherein the charging time is getting lesser yeah. and lesser so there are smarter charger solutions yeah. 
सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट चैलेंजेस द इंडस्ट्री इज गोइंग थ्रू अ वेरी वेरी डायनेमिक फेज वेयर एवरी चैलेंज बाय एन ओ एम इज बींग मैग्निफाइंडली स्पोकन अबाउट कंसर्न अबाउट एंड इट इज वर्किंग ऑन दैट एंड सोल्यूशन आर कमिंग फोर्थ सो द इंडस्ट्री इज गोइंग थ्रू द एंटायर इलेक्ट्रिकल व्हीकल इको सिस्टम इज गोइंग थ्रू अ वेरी वेरी डायनेमिक ट्रांजेक्शन वेयर every aspect of the safety utility purpose charging beat battery or beat uh, anything hmm. is is being addressed right. and 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 thanks to a very powerful enabling ecosystem these challenges on a day to day basis are being dealt with very on a very prompt and a very faster way to resolve it Right. that's uh, that's what i would say that's okay. that's happening in a, so like 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 we are in meena ev right. show right? right so if you look at dubai uh, uae as a government they are providing a platform right for the ev ecosystem players to um, meet interact have conferences have exhibitions and collaborate and address those challenges right. so there's lot of lot of things are happening across the world where such challenges that industry is passing through are getting addressed beat manual intervention mm. beat technology development intervention or some innovation concept and new business concepts are coming forth right so like ownership is an issue the yes. cost of ownership of a vehicle goes high so right. there's a model of business where people are doing a, a, a vehicle as a service correct so all kind of uh, solutions are coming forth moment there we have challenges okay that's what okay. i would say I think uh, uh, to a certain extent, what happens is this EV industry, and especially I'm talking about the two-wheelers and three-wheelers, right? This is still a very nascent uh, stage, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And what happens is when any industry, for that matter, is in nascent stage, uh, it is bound to face, you know, a lot of challenges, a lot of turbulent times, a lot of hiccups, right? And that's what we keep saying, right? Our journey has also not been something which is a very smooth sailing journey, right? Mm-hmm. We learn from whatever has gone wrong. We learn from those things. We learn from the data which is coming in. We learn from customer insights, mm-hmm. and that's what we say that. you know the insight which consumers gives us we try to work on those uh, those insights right uh, historically if you talk about there are some products that uh, you know we typically used to uh, taken from china is assemble it and that's how the ev ecosystem in india is is developing mm-hmm. but we have uh, ensured that we take the consumer insights we understand uh, what does a customer needs right. because if we have to be a serious player in this industry if we have to ensure that we continue to serve our customer for a very very long time yes. and if we have to ensure that we uh, you know we we leave our footprints on on global scale it is very important that we start innovating at our uh, home ground right yeah, yeah. and that is what we have uh, you know trying to do uh, do it here with our joy e bike the innovation the comfortability of consumer that fits in right yes. and uh, what you know like ravi mentioned we will continue to face some challenges mm. we will continue to learn from it we will continue to innovate because innovation is the only way we can move forward in this rapid development okay. lot of technology will be getting integrated you know we we will probably say that the ev vehicle what you see today will not be the same tomorrow because it's going to be like you know a mobile on wheels right so a lot of data which will be getting generated and basis that data there will be smart decisions that we as a oem also have to take yes, right indeed. in the last one or two days we have seen you know what the tire manufacturing companies are doing in terms of making the tire smarts right yeah. and that is how the only way you look and you can look forward for a nascent stage to a established player is through the innovation mm-hmm. and innovation can only come in if there are challenges yeah. if there are no challenges okay. i i don't think so uh, we'll be able to grow agreed yeah. agreed i was going to ask also like how e bikes is positioned to meet most of the challenge so i think you are recovered one of that where it's impact resistant which is fairly important for two wheelers because you know that's the safety that they have right in range anxiety would be another one i think the charging infrastructure would be so uh, with with joy e bikes either current or future like how uh, how are you positioned to meet or in fact to grow the brand to such a way that uh, maybe mass adoption would be uh, the end goal see uh, uh we are actually right now also seeing a uh, you know rising trend in terms of the adoption 
if we talk specifically about india right mm. there is a enough uh, incentive from government to the oem side as well okay. and to the consumer side as well right yeah. we have seen in other countries as well right mm. we have seen in what has happened in norway or maybe in china right and uk as well right there will always be a push because there is no other way if you have to fight the climate change that change. we are talking about if as a country we have taken a pledge that we want to be carbon neutral in coming future right, right. and yesterday also i was uh, sharing that as india we have a vision that we want to be energy exporter right mm. so i think all these things put together if you if you see it we have to you know ensure that we we continue to see a stage where we are able to push mm. and create a demand Right. and we are also able to create the supply to meet that right perfect, perfect. so uh, i think those those both factors on on both sides we are working we are seeing a, a very positive trend in terms of many terms of the adoption of ev and if you go back to india and see there will be at least close to now 30 oems there there will be a mm-hmm. lot of other brands the one important factor which is coming in is some of these are you know, legacy oems which were there mm. in the ic but right. rest of them are either a startup or entrepreneurship so i think that's a very very positive side for industry because what happens is now the the power of manufacturing or the power of product does not lies in very less hands mm. it's basically distributed and what happens is anybody who who is able to innovate who is able to listen to customer who stays more closer to the customer and are able to provide to their needs mm. is going to win that race right that's so right. we are enabling ourselves when it comes to ensuring our products our services meets to the customer expectations so we are continue to build on those right mm. and that is how you know mihos we have built we have a clear vision that we will continue to listen to our customers we will continue to work on uh, our strengths and wherever there is a uh, there is a challenges we will continue to mitigate those things yeah. so that is the that is the vision that we have right mm. and if we continue to build on that in the next two or three uh, years you will see us growing on on a la- very large scale uh, also to add to the point uh, india being probably one of the few nations in the world where cost itself could be cut down and and done more efficiently uh, the space program comes to mind right in that way like is joy ev also looking to make the platform affordable so which means cell manufacturing is still not yet in india so we will have to liaise with uh, the people outside but apart from just the uh, cell manufacturing like how are we looking to make this affordable for the masses so obviously the market is price conscious right so i i want to know your thoughts on that yeah definitely the market is price conscious but at the same time market is also asking for a quality product yes right correct and quality always comes with a price correct so lately there have been earlier instances of oems offering spurious or substandard quality product and mm. there were fair share of lapses in the right. market right and the government of india had to intervene and put on quality norms in terms of battery specifications mm-hmm. and all that so for mass adoption there are the, as i rightly been telling you if there is a new disruption or new thing coming in the market Mm. the ecosystem has to be itself enabling right so here the world ecosystem is getting impacted mm. by doing it or not doing it correct so the world is now enabling entire uh, so there are policy goals set by the government there are incentives and fiscal benefits given by the government and there is a lot of comp programs and public private partnership happening mm. so all this is leading to a a, a collaborative effort mm. where the electric vehicle as a product is being pushed for a mass adoption mm. for a greater adoption okay. and hence there are business models there are pricing structures and pricing models tweaking the regular conventional business norms mm. there is a vehicle as a service model mm. there is a battery as a service model right. so different pricing plans are getting offered yeah. in the market for greater adoption of electric vehicles to happen correct the central government in india to be very specific about indian policy guidelines mm. so if you say 
the central government of india is incentivizing the oems okay they have put up production link incentive schemes for advanced cell chemistries right. where new cell chemistries is being uh, researched upon and the private enterprise is been given money to research and get up with a new cell chemistry yeah. so there was a there was a, as high as 75000 crores being outlaid mm -hmm. and given away to private enterprise to work on new cell chemistries okay so when you talk about cell manufacturing the essential raw material the recent find in jammu kashmir mm -hmm. the recent find in rajasthan for lithium ion mines mm -hmm. and then the enabling ecosystem by various governments the central governments the state governments the state government is also doing its bit by mm. incentivizing the actual buyer by paying subsidies to the mm. consumer who is actually buying the vehicle in mm. terms of fiscal incentive directly being transferred into his bank account and various state governments in india quite a few governments in state governments in india are also giving tax rebates in their uh, mm. income tax yeah. filings so if you look at the entire ev ecosystem the whole enabling ecosystem is being pushed upon okay so that there is a greater adoption of mass adoption of electric vehicles happens and then kicks in the business scenario of the unit matrix mm. the greater the volume of people buying into the products hence the unit matrix will help us push down the cost more Perfect. but then we cannot penalize or push for going the cost more and more low mm. because a private mm. enterprise has to thrive and survive and grow all right right so the private enterprise has to work in a tandem with the adoption and there has to be a state welfare initiative by the government which wants an indirect benefit of not having import deficit because of high imports of fuel the fossil right. fuel which is yes. running out of the world so it is an interlinked ecosystem where the government the private enterprise the consumer and the policy makers are all put together and working about there are a lot of facets on pushing down the affordability factor of the electric vehicles happening so i would say that way yeah. that's very insightful actually <laughs> well, i think uh, uh, on a lighter note right yeah. uh, i think we should stop saying it's a cost uh, you know maybe conscious or maybe mm. cost is an issue right because what we see from a consumer insight right they are basically seeking a value right Correct. they are value driven yeah. Yeah. they are okay. right. they are they are value conscious right value in conscious. what right. amount what they are spending and what is the value that they are getting right, right. right. and i'm sure uh, we have enough examples where substandard products has been given i'm not only talking about ev mm -hmm. but in the other industries as well Correct. right what does happen to those uh, those players right we have enough examples but consumer today is is conscious they understand right they would want to understand what is that they are buying you know they will compare it with with their past previous experience with uh, with certain other products which is available in the market right and that is where we say probably we don't have to worry so much about the cost mm. what we have to look forward is what is the kind of value that we can give it to customer whether it is a customer experience that you talk about whether it is about you know uh, a physical experience which we touched upon last day as well or whether it is in terms of the product okay. right value durability right it's also one of the fact why we came up with this product or joy e bike as a is a kind of a what we calling it as a uh, unbreakable product mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, because there is a certain value that customer sees in uh, in this and uh, maybe it's a high time that we should start calling it as a value, value uh, driven. <laughs> driven agreed yeah. agreed yeah. but at the same time i mean yes i mean cost conscious but not uh, you know looking down on the value making yeah. sure value and cost is together yeah. but i do feel that uh, i mean if you agree with me uh, probably the ev industry is the first and probably the only automotive industry in the world where uh, the cost is going down but yet the quality remains the same I mean, it's never happened in history usually when things go up <laughs> so does the price right so uh, there i think because uh, of all the vehicles and the constant innovation like you said like this is one industry i think where uh, innovation is driving on everything and on. on and Absolutely. on so Absolutely. that i think affects the value which actually goes up whereas the price is actually coming down which is uh, unseen right in, in all of our history so uh, on that note since we have so much of data and this is 
primarily data driven. So now we're talking about AI, but obviously we're not looking at generative AI only uh, or chat GPT as most people know, but AI in manufacturing the software to make the product better or, or uh, lack of a better term, the smart tool, which we know as AI today, right? So how are we incorporating that? And also I want to know your thoughts on like how you feel that that will also enable uh, the industry moving forward. I think very good point because uh, whenever you know, if you talk about technology, I get really excited. <laughs> I had been into the technology uh, domain for last almost 20 years, right? Wow. And I have uh, closely seen, or what I say is the progress, mm -hmm. right? Over a period of time, right? In telecom, I had seen 2G progressing into 3G, then to 4G, then on 5G, and there are, you know, talks which is going on the 6G development as well, right? The technology uh, veteran. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, and I think this, what happens is with every progression of the industry with uh, uh, on, on the technology, right? Uh, the industry progress, right? right? It's a leapfrogging, what we typically call it, right? Yes. From 2G to 3G or maybe you know, 3G to 5G when we see it. Uh, how much of this is getting implemented right now is still being debated, still being used in the use cases and all. But yes, there there are players, there are uh, companies who are started using some part of the technology, right? Mm -hmm. And AI typically, as I as I keep mentioning, is is a one part of that technology, entire technology stack that right. we when we see it, right? Uh, you have to see it in the totality of, you know, whether you and your company, your data is getting migrated on, on cloud, that mm -hmm. becomes very, very impo important, imperative as well. Security comes in uh, with so much of data getting uh, generated. I think the cyber security becomes a very, very important tool for any organization yes. Uh, yes. taking place. Uh, the, the machines or uh, the product that we talk about, they also have to be connected, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's it's in your infrastructure that we talk about, whether it is the production side of it, whether these tools or the IoT that you're using for the data generation or making some more, we're calling it as industry 4.0. Manufacturing, it has to be, we will say, or automotive or manufacturing. These are probably the industry which will get benefited by, uh, you know, introduction or the application of all these uh, technologies, okay. right? So AI is not going to restrict itself only in the, like as you mentioned, chat GPT mm -hmm. or the generative AI that we are talking about. Okay. It is going to go in the production side of it. Uh, where we will be making our machines uh, smart day on day basis where they are able to take decisions of their own which is a uh, which is in the interest of uh, consumers right. and also helps to build the consumer journey right? right making those journeys efficient ensuring that their satisfactions becomes the primary motive for any organizations right mm -hmm. when they, when they when they deploy these uh, technologies right yeah. so it's not going to be restricted yeah. i think probably i am seeing it that you probably don't even have to ask some questions mm -hmm. right they will be able to generate answers for you even before you start thinking about any questions mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. that's how i i look at uh, yeah, the technology yeah, right? sure. yeah. artificial intelligence yeah um, these days, chat GPT, <laughs> one of the biggest breakthrough that AI has got to into generative technology. But yes, manufacturing is going to be largely impacted mm -hmm. and it is getting in impacted with the industry 4.0, which is talking about a lot of intervention, innovations. Yeah. And AI, as rightly pointed out by Tarun, is one of the key aspects mm -hmm. of going forward where technology will drive an artificial intelligence one of the being uh, emerging uh, not not emerging but very dynamically emerging technology mm -hmm. that's going to disrupt the manufacturing okay. and it's happening and it, there are a lot of facets to uh, manufacturing if you look at data analytics machine learning iot if you club all together it is impacting the manufacturing in a very larger way so automobile industry for that matter or transport sector which is the biggest contributor for any economy in the GDP in the economy and manufacturing with automotive industry is also going to be a lot of data input has to be given right like right. yesterday also we were talking about how Bridgestone as a company is using data on manufacturing the tires Correct. that is getting the, the data that is get generated okay. so all that is is fed to the manufacturing ecosystem where enough you know, it is integrating into the platform and getting a a high impact mm -hmm. result. So AI is definitely 
yes i would say <laughs> we cannot we cannot close our eyes <laughs> we have to be there artificial is artificial but it has to be controlled in that way i would say thank you brilliant, brilliant. thank you so just a final note on the mina ev show like uh, So what do you think of the show and uh, what do you think of the panelists what do you think uh, overall the information that has been gathered the networking the people that you met how has it been beneficial for you I, and obviously you probably looking into an entry into the UAE as well yeah meena ev ev show had quite a few marquee names that participated we were happy to be part of it as well all okay. right so the big names of the ev industry be daimler or uh, porsche mm. or byd or tesla and our our company also was fortunate to be part of the entire thing we look forward to more such interactions in conferences and exhibitions and uh, sessions of discussion that's happening on panel discussion yes it definitely benefits with 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 a good networking to happen uh, the you're connecting with people and these days collaborating and connecting with people is the way forward hmm. so such forums i would say yes they it does help mm. but we need more participants we need more uh, uh, more structured way of uh, conferencing or panel discussion or or guest to participate the right decision makers the right thinkers the right influences right. also to be in the uh, forum for mm. a forum to uh, highlight its purpose right. forum to highlight its show or showcase its purpose right. so it has to be a a, a show where it gets recognized the voice is heard at the upper echelons of uh, decision making and where things can be influenced and things can happen so we are, yes we are happy to be participating in this meena ev show and uh, thank you for having us here and we are equally looking forward to more such participations in the coming time thank you i think uh, from from our side uh, uh, what we'll say is our objective has been kind of achieved uh, because this is also one of the platform that we have witnessed that where the entire ecosystem comes into uh, right. you know yes. interaction yes. so whether you talk about government we were there uh, the investors community or the oems community or the you know other players from the ecosystem right, right. so i think this has been a, a great gathering this has been a lot of good insights which came in from from the discussions that happened overall i think objective achieved we will look forward to have some more associations like this mm -hmm. and uh, ensure that we continue to grow yeah All right perfect so this is uh, tarun and ravi so thank you so much for participation thank you so much thank you. for the interview uh, hopefully you'll have more such meets soon thank you All right thank you thank, thank you, you.